Thank you. Thanks. Please, have a seat. So I am the 18th chairman of the Joint Chiefs, also known as the only thing standing between you and happy hour. <laughs> so you'll have to gauge how many questions you want to pose based on that little factoid in your lives. That, uh, first of all, congratulations for your leadership, for taking on uh, the task. Leadership is always difficult. It is especially difficult these days, it seems to me. And so your willingness to, to, uh, to take positions of leadership in your cities is uh, quite encouraging to those of us who are committed to trying uh, to uh, make America safer, more stable, more secure, and more prosperous. So thanks for that. A um, little bit about this day in history. I always remind myself that uh, the challenges that we face uh, are not unique. They come and go throughout our history. On this day in history, in 1986, Popsicle, the company that makes those wonderful, tasty ice treats, decided to go away from the, the double Popsicle and exclusively put all of their investment into single stick Popsicle. That's, a true, that's true. And by the way, from that day forward in our history, we've forgotten how to share. And I think we're seeing that play out today somehow. That's true, though. 1986, Popsicle from two to one. Here we are. We're stuck with it. Uh, let me introduce you to somebody here. Put up uh, my slide, would you? I don't uh, normally rely upon uh, PowerPoint, and this is no exception, uh, but I do want to introduce you to this young man. This is an image. I, I try to carry around in my head images to remind me of why what I do is so important, what, what we do is so important. And this is one of those images. And it could be, this happens to be an Army Staff Sergeant serving in Afghanistan. It uh, could just as well be an Air Force para jumper. Could be a, 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 a F-18 pilot in the Navy landing on a carrier. It could be, could be a Marine on patrol in Helmand Province or anywhere else in the world. Could be somebody on the DMZ in North Korea. This happens to be an army sergeant in Afghanistan. And let me tell you what I, what I, why I carry around this image in my head and I'm sharing it with you today. The subtitle of this image is what's important. It's the subtitle of trust. Trust is what binds together those who serve, but I would also suggest to you today, it's what binds us together, those that wear the uniform and those of you that serve in your communities. Let me point out a couple of things about the image. First of all, you can see, by the way, is there any retired non-commissioned officers in the audience? Okay, you're gonna hate the picture because, the, you know, the, he's got his sleeves rolled up, he doesn't have his eye protection on, he's got a scarf around his neck. There's always some non-commissioned officer in the audience that says, look at that guy, he's out of uniform. Just get over that for one moment if you wouldn't mind. <laughs> Take a look at his eyes. You can see in his eyes those conflicting emotions that always occur when you place someone in harm's way. He's got, that, he's got courage and fear all working together. He's got, he's got confidence and he's got concern. He's just got those conflicting emotions uh, that occur in that kind of environment. Secondly, if you look to your left, his right, you'll see that someone is watching his flank. That's another soldier. And that squad leader, that sergeant right there, doesn't have to worry about what's happening on that side because he, know, he knows that he has a soldier on that side that's taking care of him. He's got, and, and by the way, vice versa, the soldier isn't worried about his back because he knows that squad leader is behind him. By the way, think of the power of that. In, a, in an environment where you could be shot at any moment, these two men, in this case, could be men and women, uh, but these two men have such trust in each other that they don't worry about what's going on around them. They can concentrate on their job because they know that as part of a team, uh, they've, got that, uh, they've got their wingman or their battle buddy uh, just off to their side taking care of them. He's got a hand mic, you can't really see it, but he's got a, a telephone receiver in his hand, a radio, and he's calling for something. Now, based on the fact that his eyes look like they do, 
you can be sure that it's something he really needs. And it could be close air support, it could be a medical evacuation, it could be logistics, it could be almost anything. But here's what sets us apart as a nation. And I've got almost 39 years of service and I've traveled around the world and I've met dozens of my counterparts from every nation on the planet. Let me tell you what sets the United States military apart. The United States Armed, many things, by the way. But let me tell you the one I'm thinking about right now, and that is this. What that guy needs, what he's calling for, he's going to get it. And he's going to get it because the people of the United States have made a commitment that when they send that young man into harm's way, he will be the best trained, best equipped, and best led on the planet. <laughs> and we have to consider that to be the imperative as we go forward and figure out these budget challenges. We can't ever forget that if we're going to ask some young man or woman from your communities, from my military, to go out and do that kind of work, we, got, we, ha we have to support them. It's just not an option. And it's not an option because of that word trust. He also, you can, some of you might be able to see it if you're up close, he's got a wedding band on his finger. And that reminds me of many things. It reminds me, first and foremost, that that bond of trust that we have with that soldier has to run back to his family. It must. He's got to believe that were something to happen to him, that his family would be cared for. Uh, because you just can't ask a young man or a woman, for that matter, to put themselves in that kind of situation unless you also provide for them the confidence that if something happens, they'll be cared for. And that's part of this tr bond of trust that runs from the battlefield, it runs back to the institution of the military, and it runs out into your communities. And now let me segue for just a minute before I take your questions and tell you how important it is and how encouraged I am that as part of your agenda here this week, you're taking on this issue of, of welcoming back into your fold the veterans who we have asked to do such heavy lifting over the last 10 years. Thank you. 